I purchased a Chamberlain belt drive opener for my eight foot garage door. In fact, I had to buy two of them because I have two doors. I bought the units on Black Friday and did not want to add to my cost by adding or replacing any parts. This video shows you that it, that it is possible to use these, which are intended for seven foot doors, on an eight foot door and to get them to work properly, fully open, fully closed. I'll explain what it takes. First, let's compare the old unit to a new unit. This video is about how to save from buying a $50 extension piece to make a seven foot drive unit operate with an eight foot door. Uh, I have in front of me with a black rail, I have the new unit, which is about drive from Chamberlain Group. And I have next to that my old unit, which was a, also designed by Chamberlain Group. It's labeled as a Craftsman. It's a screw drive, which has served me well. The problem was is that at one point, the connector between the head unit and the um, rail unit with a screw in it broke. And when I replaced it, I could not get the head unit to lift the door. It would only push it down. I have no idea why, but I went out and bought a new unit with a belt drive instead. So one of the things we're going to have to do is consider if uh, I can get enough travel out of the belt drive to do the same thing that I had with a screwdriver. By the way, this thing is, is not bolted on there. I already bolt, unbolted it. So the old unit took the carrier and moved it almost all the way up to the head. So the question is, am I gonna have enough travel? I have to have enough travel on the new unit to match what the old unit was in order to get it operate the door. So the new unit did, has a stop in here. They asked us to put a bolt in here, which I've not tightened up, but the carrier then stops from getting closer to the head. And I've got four or more inches that I may need to use in order to get enough travel out of the new unit. And so I may have to put a stop up here closer to the head to protect the head, but uh, I can get more, four more inches of travel. So here we are down at the ends that actually connect up to the wall. So the wall is going to sit right here. And on the old unit, which has already been adjusted for the 8 foot, because I bought a 12 inch piece in here, I bought the extension kit for this. And all that they did was they gave me 12 inches of this, this um, extruded aluminum. And they gave me some connectors so I can connect it up which all it did was move it 12 inches away from the wall. The carrier, edge of the carrier stopped here. The center of the carrier stopped somewhere in here. So the carrier itself was operating fully on the original piece. It never required this extra piece here. So that is one of the things I'll take a look at is if I can do something similar in order to get that to operate with the original box piece and not have to buy another $50 extension for that one. Uh, in the, oh, by the way, the original one, the screw itself stops right here at the seven foot piece. It does not, they did not even include a piece in here within the eight foot. So the carrier did not, uh, was not even intended to go into this uh, area here. So that kind of gives me a clue as to what one of my options are. So it's the amount of travel. How much travel did the original eight foot unit use? Let's see what's required for full range of motion for the door. Now the hole on the traveler started here at 17 inches away from the drywall. This is uh, irrespective of any kind of mounting that you have on the wall, two by fours, two by sixes or whatever else. So the hole started at 17 inches and it traveled down the rail and for full open, it ended up right here at 116. That's 99 inches of travel required to fully open a 96 inch door. That's an eight foot door. Let us extend the amount of travel. Okay, so here's our rail. 
this is the original hole. It's a, a little bit bigger than a 9 30 seconds, a little bit smaller than a 5 16 probably metric, I guess. And uh, here's a new one that I drilled. And I just, I didn't even go through and drill it all the way. I just drilled it through the top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this uh, quarter inch. Now I could have used a quarter inch hole, but this one fits nicely. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the nut and I'm going to put it underneath here. Now I'm just going to tighten it up. And then that's going to be my, my stop, my travel stop. Here are the different drill sizes. The hole could have been one quarter because the bolt was one quarter. I chose the 930 seconds, which gave me a slightly bit bigger hole and used that. How much travel do we now have on our new seven foot unit? With the new belt drive unit, let's see where the traveler goes. So the hole, pinhole, is right here at nine inches away from the drywall and that would be if this tab were to be bent up so we go from nine inches on this end with the new travel stop in place take a look at where the carriers is up here on the top end and the hole right here is just slightly longer than 109 that means we're getting 100 inches of travel on the belt drive unit in standard mode with a seven basically designed for a seven foot door. So we have enough travel on this. The question is, how far away from the wall do we have to be in order to make this work properly? The old unit used to travel 99 inches to service the eight foot door. The new one now travels 100 inches. We have sufficient travel, so what about the distance from the wall? Now then, the difference between the old unit and the new unit is the amount of distance from the wall for this hole. We've got enough travel, but it's sitting at 109 inches, and it needs to be out here at 116 inches. So if we can devise a method to move this whole unit 7 inches further away from the wall, we will have a unit that will operate our 8-foot door, fully closed, fully open. I will now show you what I did at the wall. I got those six inches by using two bys. In this case, I was using two by sixes. Each one's half inch, one and a half inch thick, so I've got six inches there. The verticals there were required because I had a lack of uh, supporting wood underneath, but I finally located some, and for the first one, I put a, a very heavy lag bolt into a good solid wood behind that and each layer then was uh, held in place by drywall screws that are uh, three inches long so each successive layer adds to that. And that gives me a good very stable base in order to put my, um, my hinge if you want to call it that at the end of the rail. So um, that you know if you've got some creative ideas you may come up with something different this is what worked for me. Uh, I was also contemplating doing something with steel, but uh, I opted for this instead. The unit has been mounted on those six inches of wood at the wall. Let's see what the results are. Hooray, this thing worked perfectly. The uh, Traveler has about one inch between the stop at the bottom and uh, the Traveler, and the door is fully closed. At the head unit, with the door fully up. I've got about an inch there between the travel stop and the traveler. So that was perfect as well. And as you can see, the door is fully open. I've got an eight foot opening and the garage door is clearing the, uh, the frame. So success. Tips and details. Here's another tip. If you should want or need a little more travel, check out the end of the rail that connects to the wall. In the image shown, I've bent the travel stop up. This uh, stops the carrier at a safe distance. But to add travel, the stop must not be in place. You'll manually slide the carrier towards the wall, looking for problems such as a belt or chain getting too close to the pulley. When the carrier is at the closest point, 
but still will not cause any damage, mark the rail. Drill a hole and insert a bolt as your new stop. One more idea for some of you who have a ceiling which is very close to the spring is that you may actually be able to anchor the hinge to the ceiling um, locating studs and maybe even using some two bys in between studs in order to create a uh, stable platform to anchor to. So if you've got that you can probably put your end of uh, rail just about anywhere you want to. Here's another tip. Uh, the amount of travel required along the rail and the distance away from the wall can both be reduced if you minimize the distance between the rail and the connection point on the door. When you are determining the position here of the rail, make sure that you allow for your spring. So I have brought this as low as possible. And then you also have to watch the top of the door because it arcs and it actually lifts higher than the frame. You need to make sure the door frame, you need to make sure that that's going to clear when you determine where that rail is going to be uh, connected.